Innovation has raised already $60 million. What are the long-term plans there from a capital raising front? Well, we don't plan this ahead of time. Uh, I think um, based on the trajectory of innovation, um, it's, I think today it's uh, fair to say it's the fastest to $100 million revenue company in the world for AI. Where are you now? Uh, we're not quite there yet, but we, by the time we project we'll get there, uh, which is not far from now, uh, it'll be the fastest to reach $100 million in revenue. A lot of uh, unicorns aren't even at $100 million revenue. And so I think um, it can get there pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, that is both the revenue, uh, over $100 million, on, on, onwards towards $200 million. Uh, at that point, it should be well over a unicorn and it can be listed publicly. So what's your timeline for an IPO? I think that would be close to the time. $100 to $200 million of revenue at a price sales ratio of 10 or so, which values the company at $1 to $2 billion. So it would not be far from now. It would be less than two years from now. And you wrote in your book that the era of technological discovery in AI is over, and now it's all about implementation. So how do you see this business continuing to evolve? We're still at a very early stage in the commercialization. We're still at kind of the equivalent of early internet portals, back when everybody was using Yahoo and there wasn't even a Google yet. Uh, nor Amazon nor Facebook. So there's a lot of room to, uh, to re reap uh, rewards. Now we're seeing venture deals fall dramatically. The value of deals fell 77%. Yes. Do you think this is a long-term winter or is it just a healthy short-term place to bring valuations back to healthy levels? On the negative side, uh, in an economy that is slowing down, everything slows down, including venture capital. Uh, what will happen is It'll be a, there will definitely be a shakeout. Uh, the top VCs will continue to thrive. I think many of the smaller first-time VCs uh, that may have raised money using unconventional ways are going to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. So that's one part of it. But the positive side is um, if the economy is challenging and the valuations are down, it's a good chance for us to go shopping. There are reports that some Chinese AI companies, including some that you're invested in, like Face++, Plus Plus, could be added to that blacklist, which means they'd be cut off from U.S. technology. How do you see that playing out? And does it really have an impact on China's AI industry? The AI companies are largely built on a software stack that are domestically developed. So I think the impact uh, would be much less um, than, say, on a company like Huawei, which has uh, intricate hardware software uh, products built with uh, multiple dependencies. The U.S. has been scrutinizing foreign deals in the U.S., and many Chinese funds have scaled back their investments, including Sinovation. How does this impact your strategy in the short term and in the long term? In the short term, uh, it has no, no impact because U.S. investment has always been less than 5% of our total. So now it just goes from 5% to 2%. So it's inconsequential. Uh, in the long term, I think it is a pity if, if we have to really uh, cause a total separation of two countries because uh, one could argue that artificial intelligence got to where it got to because the whole world has been able to work together 